and you may want to group stuff together um, in the way you do forecasting. So data warehouses allow you to cut data in all sorts of different ways and, and that, that gives you one hell of a lot of flexibility on top of that. Um, feeding that from, as I say, the, the operational transactions and we're getting that into real time. Um, some examples on the right hand side of the dashboards we, we implemented the last couple of months. Um, and, um, you know, I, I've, I'm a real fan of this because I've seen massive amount of um, uh, acceleration that we've managed to achieve in, in businesses by giving them the data. I think the challenge I've, I've found is almost the danger of giving the businesses too much data or giving them more than they know how to manage and, uh, and cope with. Um, um, because you've got to, the data is only as useful as um, the business's ability to exploit that and drive value out of it. So again, harking back to this morning's um, um, group panel session, I think it's, it's really, um, you know, it's really important to engage the business very early in that process and actually almost drip feed them data at, as they improve. So we've actually, those dashboards, we've actually put them out with effectively the same data as they have currently, but with smarter ways in which they can summarise it. And then we are, going, we are going through an iterative process with them of the business, sort of saying, mm, could you add this, could you add that? And then, and, and then sort of building up them over, over time rather than trying to you know, get it all there in one place. And that, that, that starts a process with the business, which I think is really important. Um, pace layering. Um, which is uh, for me about trying to find the way in which you um, um, try not to couple the systems together too tightly. So if you put the ESB in and you structure the systems in the right way, you can layer the systems so that the areas where you need um, to be in our traditional IT world, our enterprise IT world, where it's all about control and security and, and keeping the you know, keeping the integrity of the, the, the data that we've got um, over to the digital world where it's all about pace and speed and about, and about delivering solutions quickly. Um, if you can separate the layers on those, then you don't end up slowing down the digital work because, um, because you've got, you know, some change to make to your ERP system. <coughs> and um, I've kind of drew, drew a picture up there of, of on the left hand side what you see in terms of the agility that you want to achieve um, and, and, and the level of complexity that you need to get through in order to deliver a solution. So things on the top, top side of that where we look at qubit and you look at UX changes which is basically changes to the, the way the web pages look and, and the, the user interface, you can do all those relatively easy, you can do those on a daily basis. In fact, um, and, and, uh, and actually, IT quite often don't do those. In fact, the digital teams can, can do a lot of that work. Uh, you then get down into change to the website, which you ought to be able to do on a sort of weekly, couple of weekly type basis. Um, um, but then you move back to bigger changes because of the bigger impact of them, you know, where if you want to, I don't know, add a field to your core product record, then that's probably going to be a three or six month project, project and you've got to be really careful about the testing of it. And again, it's fairly, um, fairly obvious stuff. It's stuff that, that we've been doing as IT professionals for quite a long time, but quite a lot of people don't recognise that. And culturally, quite often that's why we get this separation, I think, between digital and, and, and our traditional kind of IT functions. And I'm a great believer in trying to bring those pieces together, but, but trying to recognise how we, how, we, how we reconcile that in the right way. Um, and I think that sort of brings me to the last topic, really, which is about what I see as the major sort of issues with any of the changes you've got, which is actually the cultural type stuff that, that needs to happen. It's about getting the business engagement. And again, back to the panel session this morning, there was a piece about, um, you know, making sure the business is properly engaged, making sure the pieces are focused on not building pieces of tech, they're focused on actually the business value that, you, that, that the business are getting out of them. Um, and a lot of that's about, about retaining the engagement with the business, um, you know, getting them to, to, to own the data, getting them to work through something that's at a scale they can understand, uh, because quite often they won't understand the broader opportunities, and then, and then growing those opportunities over, over a period of time through a process of continuous improvement with them. Um, 
and explaining those differences between the, the, the change that's easy to do in the digital world and the change that's quite hard to do in the, in, in the core systems. Um, if you can get the layering right, then the, the, then the relationship works really well. Um, and I think we have similar sort of issues within our own IT departments where I see issues the other way around where the IT department is hugely focused on that, you know, control and security and, and they're almost, we can't let people do, do things, we have to kind of uh, constrain that back down. Um, and um, when I've looked at things, probably um, bring your own device is probably the best example I've I kind of see around where originally I'd, I've had in previous organisations a lot of resistance from um, the internal IT department seeing that they've got to kind of take these bring your own the, these private devices and then plug them directly into the network. We've taken an approach um, in places where you just get um, you just treat it as an external device and treat it as if it's a customer accessing your website, but actually you expose your um, internal systems via web access to the outside world. You, um, you have an external wireless network and then, you, and then you control the way you access the internal systems. And by adding that extra layer that, that the internal team are sort of managing an exter effectively an external network set of accesses, um, it simplifies things a lot. And it drives you again to compartmentalize, create those Lego bricks kind of structure that, that that we see um, around, around how the services are kind of packaged and pulled together. And it avoids <coughs> um, creating kind of legacy that, that then, that then locks, the, uh, locks the organization in and slows the organization down. Um, so there's those pieces. Um, so that's kind of all the, com uh, all the kind of areas I had. Get a few questions. I thought just before that, I'd show you, a, show you another uh, of our TV adverts. This might hopefully find that interesting. That, uh, Actually, that one is not auto, auto running. So let me, let me run that. This guy, let's call him Guy, is having a Maplin moment when his tech know-how is run dry and he needs a helping adapter. Slightly tense Maplin moment. Reversing camera kit might help. Third date Maplin moment. Romantic dinner, remote dimmer. Your hair looks nice. Thank you. Maplin moment. Maplin. <laughs>